Let's talk about epistemology. Of course, most of you know the Greek word, the Greek word episteme, knowledge. You might recall in Plato's Republic, there's this contrast in the divided line between doxa or opinion and knowledge. <clears throat> knowledge being this thing that, that seems to be sort of object of ambition, right? It's difficult to acquire knowledge. Not just anything can be knowledge. Knowledge is a fairly high up on the divided line. And there are many things lower on the divided line that people mistake for knowledge. People think they have knowledge, but they don't. In fact, you might say that's the common theme of most of the early Socratic dialogues of Plato. Euthyphro thinks that he has knowledge of piety. Socrates says, well, in that case, Euthyphro, you must possess the form of piety. Please share it with me. And Euthyphro is unable to do so. People who read Euthyphro. Uh, we might think in the, uh, Plato's Republic, the early and middle books a sustained inquiry into the nature of justice. And the assumption that the person who understands justice must know something about justice, must know, we might say, the form of justice, the model of justice. Uh, for Socrates, then for Plato's Socrates, that involves knowledge of the ideal city and the order of the best soul. All of these looking at questions of knowledge the thing that I want to begin with, though, today, in the, in the few minutes that we have left, is the fact that we don't find separate treatments of epistemology or knowledge in ancient and really even in medieval authors. I began asking my colleagues some years ago, what's the one really good text of Thomas Aquinas about epistemology? And Dr. Hochschild, among others, told me, Aquinas doesn't talk about epistemology in just one place. And that's actually kind of fascinating when you think about it. He doesn't talk about knowledge, defining it, talking about its methods in just one single place. Why not? Because knowledge is of all things. You might talk about the knowledge of a thing when you talk about the thing itself. You talk about God, you talk about knowledge of God. You talk about nature, you talk about knowledge of nature. You talk about man, you talk about knowledge of man. So there's this sense I get that our habit of treating epistemology as a separate or distinct field of philosophical endeavor as its own sort of unique subfield of philosophy. Some of you may recall that in my the immortal double circle diagram. I, the upper right quadrant is where I locate epistemology. Okay, theory of knowledge is what I use when I'm teaching my undergraduates, my, uh, my, my freshmen and sophomores. Yeah. Metaphysics, epistemology, ethics, and philosophical anthropology. So I give, I recognize this, I give this, but even to speak of epistemology as a distinct field, I think involves making some assumptions about the nature of knowledge. Most importantly, that it is a thing that can be studied and discussed. We can have a theory of knowledge. And it seems to me one element to be aware of historically, especially before we plunge into a sort of strongly analytic take on a theory of knowledge, is that not every historical philosopher thought of himself as conducting a study that might be described as epistemology or even epistemological. If we refer to Plato's Theaetetus as being his epistemological dialogue, we are applying an anachronism. We are using a modern category, say a post-Cartesian category. So one of the things I want to bring up sort of as a theme for the course is whether a narrow focus on knowledge, on philosophy about knowledge, is not itself a product of a certain type of modern engagement with philosophy, modern pattern of thinking. Descartes, beginning with the problem of skepticism. Before I talk about what I know, I have to talk about how I can know, and I have to defeat the skeptical objection that says that I can't know anything at all. In other words, philosophy begins with Descartes' victory over Montaigne, with Cartesian replies to this sort of pervasive and insidious 
Montanian skepticism from the late 16th century. And if you've not read Montaigne, if you've not, if you don't recollect Descartes from any recent study, uh, simply know that that Montaigne is a, is a French skeptic and a very persuasive one in his time. And Descartes, I think, at least partially, conceives of himself as responding to, as defending the possibility of knowledge and certainty against or against Montaigne's skepticism, as well as against he thinks the dogmatism of the scholastics. So, a little bit of situation, a little bit of situation here. Um, so one reason I settled for Aquinas on this text of the uh, methods of the sciences, where does Aquinas talk about knowledge? He talks about it when he talks about the different science, the diverse sciences by which we know things, and then the methods appropriate to those sciences. Another theme that we'll see is sort of post-Cartesian theme, the idea that knowledge is united in part by the methods used to produce knowledge. These methods are not diverse, but tend towards unity. Some of you recognize this theme. Some of you recognize this theme from some of my previous courses. Are the methods that we use to acquire knowledge unique? That is, is there a single method that is the or the best method for acquiring knowledge and certainty? Descartes certainly seems to think that there is. Or are there diverse methods? Methods, each of which is suited to the science and the object of its study. And that is roughly, as I'm telling the story, the Aristotelian account. Aristotle says, those of you who read Nicomachean Ethics in Phil 103, Aristotle says, we should not expect the same level of certainty from our inquiry into ethics and politics as we expect from our inquiry into mathematics. Why? Because Ethics and politics deals with a different sort of thing. It deals with the habit, the habitual and usual actions of human beings who are free beings and who can't be known to the level of precision. So we expect only as much precision in our knowledge as, is, as the subject matter, as the object, as the being studied will sustain. So it is an error, Aristotle says this quite explicitly at the beginning of the ethics, it is an error to look for greater precision of knowledge than the being studied will allow us to have. In the Cartesian approach, many of you will recollect this, and I hope that if you don't, I'm reminding you now. The Cartesian approach is to say that the proper method for the study of anything is the method of the human mind, because the mind is present in every act of knowing, and it structures, as we come to see later on with Kant, solving some lingering problems from Cartesianism, it structures every act of knowing, and therefore we begin in reflection. We begin by knowing our minds, their nature and limits, and the nature and limits of the kinds of knowledge they can generate. And then, crucially, this becomes very important if you think back to the period from Descartes to Kant. This becomes much more important to recognize what the limits of the human mind are, what kinds of things the human mind cannot know and can never know. Those of you who studied Kant, Kant has quite a lot to say about that. They're just some objects of purported objects of knowledge, which can never be genuine objects of knowledge. You can't know the truth about them. So to try to speak about them scientifically or systematically or rationally in the mode of knowledge is just a just category error. To try to speak of knowledge of supersensible reality, as Kant says. I'm throwing a lot of thinkers here that many of you maybe have not read, and it's a little bit bewildering. I'm not doing this to try to um, bewilder people but to give some context that people might latch onto. If none of these names mean a whole lot to you or the concepts I'm throwing out don't mean a whole lot to you. Just make a note of it, get as much of it as you can. It's not critical for what's coming, but I think it will help you to frame it if you've got this sort of framework to see what's going on here. 